Holy matrimony. Angie and Paul, I greet you to our assembled guests. On behalf of Angie and Paul, I welcome you. Carmen and Larry Boudreau, Maurice and John and Junko Cox, do you give your blessing to Angie and Paul and promise to do everything in your power to uphold them in their marriage? We do. Elijah, Samuel, Wesley, and William, are you happy that Angie and Paul are going to be part of your new family? <laughs> Angie and Paul, we welcome you to this moment in your lives and to the place that you have come to in each other's hearts. We join with you on this day as you commit before God and this gathering that from this point forward you shall live as one. I remind all of our guests that you have been invited here for a holy purpose, not just to witness, but to participate fully with your thoughts and prayers, asking God to bless this couple and their married life. Together, we all thank God who brought them together and ask him always to guide their way. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are always faithful in your love for us. Look mercifully upon Angie and Paul who have come seeking your blessing. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon them so that with a steadfast love they might honor the promises they make this day through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Angie understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage. Do you affirm your desire and intention to enter into this covenant? Will you love Paul, console him, honor him, and care for him in sickness and in health? And will you be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. Paul? Do you take Angie as your wife to live with her in holy matrimony? Will you love her, console her, honor her and care for her in sickness and in health? And will you be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I will. With all of you witnessing these vows, 
do everything in your power to uphold Angie and Paul in their marriage. Now let's listen from some readings from scripture. Maurice. I have it open. This way, buddy. You're acting. This is from the Song of Songs. Like a lily among thorns is my darling among the maidens. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my lover among the young men. I delight to sit in his shade and his fruit is sweet to my taste. He has taken me to the banquet hall and his banner over me is love. Strengthen me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. His left arm is under my head, and his right arm embraces me. Place like a seal over my heart, a seal like on your arm. For love is as strong as death, its jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love, rivers cannot wash it away. If one were to give all the wealth of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned. We have heard Morris giving us a beautiful uh, recital of King Solomon's beautiful canticle of canticles, telling us what love is. Now we're going to change, we're going to move to the New Testament and listen to St. Paul telling us how to do it. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am only a sounding gong and a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. I give all I possess to the poor. I surrender my body to the flames, but have not love. I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but protects with the truth. Always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, there will, these will cease, will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfection disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish ways. Now we see, but in a poor reflection, as in a mirror. Then. We shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now there are three, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Angie and Paul, we live at a time when very little in life is considered sacred. One thing must remain so, however, 
or the entire world disintegrates. That is and shall be an agreement between two people. This day we celebrate a sacred agreement between the two of you. I congratulate you on the journey of your lives, on the strength and the courage it has taken for each of you to make your way to this place. Both of you have found a way to put away childish things and embrace a very serious love. You receive on this day the blessings thereof for yourselves and for the entire world. Angie, Paul is God's gift to you but he is not a gift for you alone. It is God's will that in your love, this man might find within himself a greater sense of who he is meant to be. You are asked by God to see the good in this man, to accept him for who he is and who he shall be, so that he may be healed and made strong. In this way, God's purpose shall be accomplished in this relationship. May this man find the kingdom of heaven through the love you share. The same is true for you, Paul. Angie is God's gift to you, but she is not a gift for you alone. God wants you to love Angie in such a way that she shall find in your love the beautiful creature that God has created, a loving, caring, positive, and strong woman so that the whole world be blessed by her. Allow her to rest in your arms so that she will feel protected as never before. Let Angie know that from now on, she has you, she has in you such a love on which she can depend. From this point forward, Angie, Paul's needs will carry the same priority as your own. In the same way, Paul, from now on, Angie's needs will carry the same priority as your own. You won't be two competing forces, but two positive creative energies that will make of your lives a harmonious and grace-filled union by the love of God. The angels shall dance between you, and they will rejoice in the dance of life you do together. Our prayer for both of you is that you might find in each other's love such profound acceptance and total release that together you might experience the forgiveness that shall free the world. May you create with God a peace of heaven on earth. To both of you, I enjoy you to release at this time all impediments to your joy. In this moment, may you forgive each other any past transgressions that you might enter this marriage reborn. Allow the waters of forgiveness to wash you clean. You are given the chance to begin your lives again this day as God grants you radical renewal through the power of this commitment. You commit to a compelling future for yourselves, for the children you have, and to the part you might play in the healing of the world. Receive fully God's gifts on this day as he receives the gift of your love for each other. May you rejoice in God as God rejoices in you. To you, the congregation gathered here, if anyone has an objection to this marriage, let him or her voice it now or forever hold his or her peace. From this point forward, may your voices speak only positive affirmations that your energies might support Angie and Paul 
that any words you say bless and protect the holiness of this bond. Angie, I now ask you to say publicly the declaration of commitment you'd like to make to Paul. Since I have found you, Paul, I have found a new life. The decision to commit to share that life with you is one I make happily and full of confidence in our love. Secure in the knowledge that you will be my constant friend, my faithful partner in life, and my one true love. On this special day in the presence of God and our family and friends, I, Angie, I take you, Paul, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in sickness and in health, in joy and in sorrow, as well as through the good times and the bad. I promise to take care of you, cherish you, to support and to respect you, and to love and honor you all the days of my life. And if my lifetime of loving you is not enough, I promise you that I shall love you even better after death. Paul, Paul, I now ask you to say publicly the declaration of commitment you like to make to Angie. <clears throat> from the very moment I saw you, I knew you were the one for me. The one whom I spent the rest of, the one who I'd spend the rest of my life. Our courtship has been among the best days of my life. For you've become not just my lover and companion, but also my best friend. Get down. On this special day, in the presence of God, our family. I, Paul, <clears throat> take you, Angie, to be my wife, secure in the knowledge that you'll be my constant friend, my faithful partner in life, and my one true love. Okay, thank you. So, so you I promise to love and cherish you, to, to keep you close in faithfulness, to be your prop and help in times of need, to make you laugh and to hold you when you cry. To hold you in the highest respect and honor as you so deserve for the rest of my life. Sorry. And so we come, Angie and Paul, to the presentation of rings by which you symbolize and bind your love. The rings, please. I'm going to give you the box. 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 Reminding them of the covenant they have made this day. Amen. And you're going to put the ring on Paul's hand and you're going to repeat after me. Paul, I, Angie. Paul, I, Angie. Give you this ring. Give you this ring. As a sign of our covenant. As a sign of our covenant. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the, Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul, repeat after me. Angie, I, Paul. Angie, I, Paul. Give you this ring. Give you this ring. As a sign of our covenant. As a sign of our covenant. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A wedding is often viewed as the union of two people. In reality, however, it is much broader. As we give thanks to God for the love that brings Angie and Paul together, so too we recognize the importance of families and the additional love and responsibility that family and friends bring to this relationship. As part of the family nature of marriage, we recognize Elijah, Samuel, Wesley, and William 
and the significant role they play in this union we celebrate today. Grandparents, would you bring the children up front? Do you want some in front or? Get your two. Come here, bud. Angie and Paul present Elijah, Samuel, Wesley, and William. These medallions, as a symbol of family commitment and in recognition of the hope and joy made visible through this marriage. Marriage is often symbolized by two merged circles. The family medallion has three circles to acknowledge love as a relationship of more than two people. When two people love each other, they reach out to include others. Do we have the medallions? No, they're on the bag, on the holdover bag. On the Who's going to go get them? We're going to wait for the medallions. In the meantime, I want you to think about what we have done, the vows that they have given to each other, and maybe you can renew your own vows, the ones that are married, or the ones that are about to marry. Okay? You guys are doing so well. So beautiful. Come here. Yes. Mommy has a bottle for you. Come here. Can I have one? Can I have one? Yes. Mommy, can I have one? Yes, it's like this. Okay, after. Hold on. Stay here with Mommy. Sorry, I forgot. Elijah, come here. It's okay. It's okay. It's on the table. Hello, my darling. You are the best helper I've ever seen in my entire life. He likes this. Hey guys. Put that in my pocket. Hello. Hello. Put that in my pocket. Here, can I put it in mine? You your pockets don't work. That's my yeah. Job. You do? Yeah. What table did you put them on? You like it? Do you see? Like you see? Hmm? You can so find I put yourself them on the table where she was sitting. She made me. Hmm? Your daddy hmm? said that one of you looks so like one of these guys over here. Can right you find a picture over there? From your knife? There you go. You see her coming in. There. How pretty is this? No. At least we all stop no, crying. I, I can't find me. No, it's okay. somebody that looks like you. <laughs> I'd probably be bad if you walked away from that. <laughs> you can say that this was Consuela. You can say this was your husband and wife. Yes. What? I'm sorry. He looks like me. I knew it. You can tell them that we pause so everyone can stop crying. Hmm? You can say that we all pause so we can stop crying. Absolutely. We also took a break so they can stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> We're smart. <laughs> Did she hear it was in the Velobra bag, the gray Velobra bag on the table? Right by the front door. Right by the front door. You didn't see the front door. She's, I think I see her. Elisha, come here, bud. We're almost done, so it's okay. We're doing very well. We just want everybody to sit here. <laughs> she went to the Who was in charge? Where's my boss lady? She must have. She found them. She found them. She found them. She's awesome. Oh, wait, here she is. She's the one who introduced okay. us to you, so. I know. What's her name? Lindsay. Lindsay. Lindsay found them! Woo! Yay! She's also credited with all this, so. Hey. What is this part? Can you stop? Do you want me to feed you the lines? Hey. Yes. Yes. Hey, that's cool. Can we open them? No. Can we take turns? Okay, we're back. We're oh, on. Those rings? Yes, yes. Rings? Oh, I'm going to carry them. Yes. Are they rings? Paul is going to present to Elijah and Samuel saying, Daddy. In the giving of these medallions. In the giving of these medallions. I pledge. I pledge to you. I pledge to you. Elijah and Samuel. Elijah and Samuel. My never-ending love. My never-ending love. And support. And support. Beautiful. Do you 
You're gonna get yeah. one. Angie's gonna Your get turn. one. Your turn, Angie. Oh, wow. Okay, come here. Bye, Angie Where's is going to present the medallions to Wesley and William. In the giving of these medallions. In the giving of these medallions. I pledge to you. I pledge to you. Wesley and William. Wesley and William. Oh, my never ending love and support. My never ending love and support. Now you can go sit down. Bye, Wesley. Can I go sit down too? Yes, please. Let us pray. Uh, okay. You don't make it go sit down now. It's going to find lost now. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, without your grace, no promise is sure. Strengthen Andy and Paul with patience, kindness, gentleness, and all other gifts of your spirit so that they may fulfill the vows they have made. Keep them faithful to each other and to you. Fill them with such love and joy that they may build a home of peace and welcome. Guide them by your word to serve you all their days. Help us all, O oh God, to do your will in each of our homes and lives. Enrich us with your grace so that, supporting one another, we may serve those in need and hasten the coming of peace, love, and justice on earth through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is, is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power, power and, the and the glory forever. Amen. Because we have heard and accepted your promises to each other, it is my honor and my delight to now pronounce you, henceforth, from this moment, husband and wife. You may kiss your bride now. Pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Paul Cox and their sons Elijah, Samuel, Wesley, and William.